All right, test, 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 test. <clears throat> Try it again. Convincing idiots. Convincing idiots. Call it ham gravy. <laughs> I informed them that I sided with the stat man, not just anyone's opinion, the stat man Brian Fisher. These kids today. Uh, Jingle All the Way is, in fact, the best Christmas movie of all time. I need to get Grandma a present, <laughs> and my herpes is flaring up. <laughs> I got it. Mm-hmm. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> I'm the Millennial Here's Santa. Three friends representing three different generations. That's our whole shtick. That's our thing. Mm-hmm. Nick got the whole poop. Mm-hmm. I'm standing in the sea breeze, awesome. holding a turd, just mightily. I'm just going to hats. <laughs> anyway, on a lighter note... Uh. And convincing idiots is live at their non-regular time in five, four, three. And welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the vodcast. Welcome to the broadcast. Boys and girls, welcome to the show. This is Convincing Idiots. My name's Dean. Oh, yeah, the Zennial. Yep, Zennial. Brian Genics. And I am a millennial. My name is Nicholas. And if this is your first time listening to us, well, what a treat tonight is going to be for you. Because we are three mere acquaintances that sometimes masquerade <laughs> as friends and talk about <laughs> nerd and pop culture <laughs> topics. So settle in. Uh, if you have not already done so, please feel free to go to any of our social and media uh, sites. There are a plethora of them for you to choose from. Uh, you can go find links to all of those uh, social media accounts. If you go to our link tree, so just type in Google Convincing Idiots link tree, L-I-N-K-T-R-E-E. There you're going to find the links to you know uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, our YouTube channel, Instagram, uh, TikTok, all that good stuff. Our email address and our website, convincingidiots.wordpress.com, is where you can also find more links and places to listen to our podcast, as well as get to know us a bit. Maybe poke around, poke around at us, see what you like, see what you don't. It's the only way to find out what you like and what you don't. Just poke around, see what works for you. So uh, we get are, it in there. Uh, we get it in there. So speaking mm-hmm. of getting it in there, we are getting it in there mm-hmm. tonight uh, yeah, by uh, on, uh, recording on a uh, non-typical evening for us. We typically record mm-hmm. on Tuesdays. We are recording on Thursday this week um, because Dean was trapped in a snowbank and recently dug his way out. And that is why he is dressed this way. It's Snowmageddon. It's mm-hmm. Snowmageddon. It is Snowmageddon. Uh, no, we had some stuff arise uh, the, other, the other evening, so we decided to push it to Thursday. Um, so I would like to know how my good friend Brian's been since we last spoke a week ago. Mm. Brian, how have you been? Doing well, brother. Thank you. Nice yeah. uh, weekend with Allie last weekend. Some good quality time. Dinner, brewery. She hadn't seen Spider-Man yet, so we actually went over to Barberton there and saw Spider-Man on Saturday afternoon. Just slinging really a little bit. That. Sweet. Yeah, so that was really your second it. time then? My second time, her first time. Awesome. Was it better um, the second time? You know what? It was. I enjoyed it. It was. I'm glad to see it in the theater a second time. I picked up on a lot of stuff I missed uh, the first time. So, yeah, good stuff. And uh, Sunday we just sat around and had bloody marys and watched NFL playoff football. It was very nice. So, That's but cool. uh, yeah, glad to be here with you. Bloody guys. marys, eh? Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. like I, right. I had this. Look at that. Had a good time mixed, on Saturday, yeah. did you? Absolutely. I haven't had a bloody mary in a long time, so it was just very, yeah. very. Good. No, it wasn't even about that. It was just like just a chill drink spicy wintry it was nice so, i would yeah. like to revisit bloody mary's because i've only yeah, ever had, had one, one maybe twice in my life wasn't a fan but i was also a lot younger so like i don't know if maybe my taste would would change like that maybe i'd like it more now i would like to revisit a bloody mary i'd be interested in that yeah it was good i give it a shot different bars around that have like a bloody mary whole you know bar and actually, we talked about having a party sometime, maybe like a Bloody Mary party, just put all the fixins out and stuff like that. I don't know, but what is the array yeah, of fixins revisit. on a Bloody Mary? One, come on, ask. everybody! If you, if it's your time in the month, you want a party, and your name's Mary. Let's go to Brian's. There you go. 
I knew I knew it was going that way. Some at some point with you, I knew it was going that way. What can uh, I say? No, so you put it's, it's tomato juice, right? There's a celery stick involved. Honestly, just by a mix, by a Bloody Mary mix. We didn't f around with trying to make it on our own, so we got a. It was we had a, it was a, literally a V8 Bloody Mary mix in a in a container. So okay, made, just had that with vodka and uh, celery and okay. uh, some. Put, we put some pepper in it, but you could do all kinds of stuff. You could do olives. You could do bacon. You could do oh all, all kinds of Tabasco stuff. sauce. Tabasco sauce, sure, absolutely. Verde so. sauce packets from Taco Bell, defunct from <laughs> sure. five years ago. Yeah, do whatever you want. So we're gonna get wild. Re- revisit the Bloody Mary out there, you you kids. That's why some of I want to have one. Yeah. I've never had one. Yeah. We should make our own versions of Bloody Marys and call them uh, Bloody Idiots, and then we would each have we'd have a Bloody Dean, a Bloody mm. Brian, a Bloody Nick, and see what Ooh. kind of twist we can put on it. The Bloody Idiot like- Challenge. There we go. I like the idea. And, and, and we have episode. to make our own then and present it and, and maybe yes. have somebody that can say that maybe enjoys them and can say whose is the best. I like yeah. that. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe we get together and shoot sometime. We'll we'll do that too. But yeah, that would be I like good. I like that. That's yeah. a good idea. Okay. Good idea, Nick. That was nice. Okay. Uh Dean, mm-hmm. what have you been up to? Um, as you can see from the hat, it's Nomageddon. Um mm. it's cold. Mm-hmm. It's wintry. It won't stop. We're all going to be inside for the rest of our lives. Doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. No summers, no hot heat shit. Fucking ah. great. No, it's it's um no nothing. Uh, nothing new with me. Um, just working, living, hanging out, did a little painting. Was that this week or last week? I don't know. It all last fucking ones together. Last weekend. You, you last week. The pictures week, last weekend. weekend. I actually well, felt like you yeah. captured my likeness very nicely. So, well done. Very nice. Very well, nice. you know, I am an artiste. Mm-hmm. So, what were you painting, Dean? Um, I was painting. Um, uh, they were like a, 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 it's like a starfish. Like you ever see the in the the mouth of a starfish, and mm-hmm. and I named it Nick, <laughs> um, mainly because, you know, it's what you what you identify the most. Mm-hmm. You know, paint what you know. Mm-hmm. So yes, very good. Much like his French girls, I believe he named it uh, Les Notted Balloon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Nick, how yeah, are you? N- sorry, nothing sorry, with me. Dude. No, I'm. So Dean's no, just gonna just fuck around and not tell us anything no. real. So we're just. <laughs> you're not I'm telling us anything real. We're leaving here. you. No, Nick. How about you? Do you want to tell us what you did? No, I really did. I haven't done anything. I just you painted. What did you actually paint? Or did you? Oh, you painted uh, your bathroom. Um, uh, my girlfriend is moving in, and mm. uh, she said that color's got to go. Well, no, no, no. Carter's moving out, so we're we're painting uh, the kids' rooms. Uh, oh, okay. Different color. Cool. So uh, we painted Carter's room this this past weekend. Nice. Big move. When's the big, big move happen? Big move. Mm-hmm. Big old move. When's it happening? Uh, within this month, mm-hmm. February. That's be by the end of February. I don't so. know. Or else the relationship's over. Or <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it, has to be, it has to be this month. It's I, it's this it's month like the, or uh, never. She hit the self destruct <laughs> button and said, "You have twenty eight days." <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Painting. Beep, beep. Cool. All right. Passing through this house, that beeping. Yeah. So we're a broken smoke alarm. Eh, whatever. It's fine. What so are you? How are you? Uh, good. I didn't want to step on toes, but the awkward <laughs> silence was creeping in, and I didn't know if I should go or not. Um, no, I'm That's good. Really uh, I know it's only two days later than when we than we normally record, but I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in two weeks. Um, I know, right? Yeah. But uh, what did we had this weekend? Uh, went, oh, me and my mom went to the Lake Erie Monsters game, the Cleveland, sorry, yeah. Cleveland Monsters game. Yeah. Uh, this weekend. How's your mom doing? She's doing great. You know, you yeah. know. You Tell do. Us you know. I will. Tell us hi. Right. We got these really kick ass little Dave Grohl bobbleheads. All right. Yeah. It was awesome. uh, Cleveland Rocks night. It was a little Dave Grohl wearing a uh, Cleveland Monsters shirt. It was pretty cool. He was not there, but, uh, we, we got mm-hmm. these cool bobbleheads. But, uh, no, me and mom had a good time. You know, it's, uh, my mom and I don't get the chance to hang out as much anymore. I mean, I see, I have the benefit of, you know, living close to my mother, seeing my mother very frequently, but 
you know, we all do things as families together. We go out to dinner, we go to her house, she comes here and, you know, or, you know, the kids stay the night a lot. But as far as like me and my mom spend a one-on-one time, we don't do that a whole, whole lot anymore. So it's nice to do that stuff. I'm not complaining, you know, I love when everybody is, getting together, but it was cool. It was fun. We sat and she, it is obnoxious. She me... I feel the same that I don't spend enough alone time with your mom. as you. <laughs> right. Well, this is Darn your it. weekend with her, I think. Took my joke. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, so it's at least every three weeks on a rotating schedule. I'll get to spend time with my mom in like three weeks. So, so. Uh, but no, uh, it was scheduled, fun. Dean. We have to get a schedule, <laughs> Dean. Yeah. yeah. Nick, can she pencil us in? in? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I'll try to put in a good word for you. <laughs> um, no, that's nice. That's cool. But yeah, it was it was cool. We uh, she got me tickets for Christmas as part of as my Christmas present, and uh, they were great seats. We were actually in. We were three rows behind the players' box, so I mean, we were right right there. Nice. So it was cool. I it was. Uh, it was for stuff like that. It's like I watch a lot of hockey and like I love being that close, but it's more like um, the intricacies of the game and stuff like different activity on the bench and things that guys chirping back and forth with each other. That stuff's really fun to watch. So uh, but that was really cool. It was a fun night out in uh, Cleveland. We went and uh, ate at Michael Simon's B spot. I think it's called in there or the spot nice. or maybe it's just called. Hey, I think they changed the name, but it's Michael Simon's like inside the arena restaurant. Had a good burger there. Hmm. Oddly enough, I painted uh, Nick's uh, B spot. <laughs> but that's that I've already gone, so you sorry. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and finish. Uh, yeah. I thought it was fake, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm I, <laughs> oh it's I thought it was a little more realistic yeah. than it's that. So real. Um but yeah, that's about it. Nothing much. Just um, you know, it's snowing a lot and uh, you know, just doing a lot of shoveling and uh having beers while you shovel and it's you know, it's it's a nice time. So that's about it. It's, uh, it's Dave Kroll, buddy. Can you spend time? <laughs> so go, go to bed there, buddy. So I just wanted to be <laughs> hanging out with my kids, further, doing podcasts with my kids. You know, there you go. It's the usual. That's all right. Before we go any further, I would like to bring up something. Uh, sure. If you guys don't mind, um, I would like to congratulate uh, the boys over there at uh, came from Gen X. Brian is a uh, one part of that uh, mm-hmm. for their fiftieth for their fiftieth uh, episode. Mm-hmm. They just had so I want to Thank say you. congratulations to those those fellas. Thank you so much. Monday nice night. job, boys. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah. I do enjoy your show very much. I do. I don't. I'm not a. I don't listen. I don't catch every episode, but I I do listen when I can, and I I definitely enjoy the uh, the banter between you three. I think I've told you before when you guys first started because I I didn't really I knew you guys were doing the football podcasts. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was right. well well before us but um and then when you started this one i'm like you can definitely tell that you guys have been friends for a long time that comes off very easy very easily at after yeah, on so. this one <laughs> yeah you can definitely tell this is ex- incredibly forced like Did this is just fucking me this is like this is like brian's dickhead stepsons that he was like i gotta drag <laughs> these guys somewhere with their lives let's at least try to instill some structure once a week to where they have to be at a certain place at a certain time once a week. But well, um, well, Nick, the reason uh, that is, is because they're all the same age. Um, and, and with this podcast, we are all, like we'd said, if you're listening for the first time, we're all three different generations coming together. Those gentlemen Mm -hmm. are all the same generation, same, all Gen X fellas. And they talk about Gen X things and they sometimes, um, what you know? Pardon my friends, but they shit on millennials and and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, since uh, Zennial is, is practically made up, they don't haven't mentioned me, but uh, right. And you tend to agree with them a lot, probably. So it's well, really here is the thing: they, there was a they. they I just want to take umbrage uh, to Mr. Cooper, who who brought up the story about Skinner. the wa- Skinner. I'm sorry, Skinner. It's all right. Skinner. Mm-hmm. Skinner brought up the uh, not a listener, not a real listener. <laughs> Would never confuse those two. <laughs> all Dude, old people Cooper's sound the same Cooper's not even to me. on there all the time, and if you listen, you yeah. know. But Skinner's always there. Yeah, he's not on there at all, all anymore. All these old yep. guys sound the same to me, Nick. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck am I supposed to do here? That's that's fair. I always enjoy <laughs> Keith's uh, different nicknames for you guys as he yes, as he that's you fun. In. That's that's fun. I like that. So, anyways, uh, uh, Skinner uh, brought up the story about the woman who gave a kidney to her boss, and then she fired him, or or she fired her. The boss Mm -hmm. uh, fired the woman. Mm -hmm. Um, And they had portrayed it on the show um, that the woman uh, 
well, Skinner started going off thinking that this was a millennial situation, that the boss had to be a millennial because it was a, such a piece of shit thing to do. Um, and I would just like to tell Skinner that I did the research for him, if he, if he didn't mind. Mm-hmm. I, I went and did, did the research for him. And that both, uh, uh, both people, the woman and the boss, were both women. And they were one was the the donor was forty seven and the boss not a millennial she was sixty one years old. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. There um, you have it. And the, she went back. So you're to work. saying we've been she acquitted of all all uh... right. I I expect I expect uh, um, apologies to all millennials. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know I'll be looking for my apology from uh, Mister. Uh, uh, skin bone, Skinner, mm-hmm. whatever. I can't mm-hmm. think of a good one right off that. So, and 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 the woman also uh, went back to work. They ended oh. up transferring her, and 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 was was kind of just being real shitty to her. And then she's claiming she she went to a psychiatrist for uh, mental damages and stuff. And the psychiatrist or whatever, somehow, some way, they they got it to corporate. And within like two weeks, she was fired. I see. Okay. So that is the. I just I, again, we all. I I am the first one in to to admit that I don't fucking do research. So a lot of the shit that I say is probably <laughs> horseshit and wrong. But he he started taking jabs at millennials and uh, and Dean felt the need to be my my white knight and valiantly protect right. me. My You're, honor. I, I am the man who will fight for your honor. Oh, mm. I will be the hero that you are dreaming of. There you Ooh. go. He can mm-hmm. take away the pain. Not the same song. <laughs> it's a millennial song. You wouldn't know. <laughs> All right. So I got. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, okay, Skinner. Um, if he'd like to come on and apologize, that would be super neat. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> if he'd like yeah. to make an appearance and show his <laughs> face and apologize. We can't. Mm-hmm. Well, they had a guest for their 50th episode. We can't get fucking guests. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I would so like to, I, any reviews, I'll give you a quick yes. one because I'm not super far into the series. But I would like to point out that I took Dean up on uh, something that he's been harping on for a while. I started watching Ted Lasso. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Ted Lasso, you guys. Ted Lasso. Mm, might be the most adorable show I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Ted mm-hmm. Lasso is Bluey for adults. If anyone has children and is familiar with the, the show Bluey on Disney+, Plus, it is an animated series with a little Australian family of dingoes, and it's just fucking adorable. Like, I don't know what else to say about it. It's cute and fun and funny, but adorable. It's the family we all want to be, and it's just beautiful, and it's pure, and so wonderful. Ted Lasso is the equivalent of Bluey, but for adults to watch. It's oh, just, nice. uh, it is, it's, it's not at all what I expected, really. Just because of, um, you know, when I think of Jason Sudeikis, obviously Saturday Night Live is where I was familiarized with him. Mm-hmm. He's a funny guy. Um, you know, Horrible Bosses movies, things like that. Just different hall pass, different things you've seen him in. I guess I wasn't necessarily anticipating his this character to be so heartwarming when i hear that they're winning uh best comedy series you know and things like that um i think the jaded part of because i just assumed it was like shitty humor and also dean liked it so like i'm like this is like shitty humor no. like it's that, that you know what i mean sense. like it's clever shitty humor or something um but i didn't i which i kind of as i'm watching it i'm like I see why anyone would love it, but I was kind of, I'm like, this is not what I expected from a Dean recommendation at all, but it is, it's just, a, it's a, it's, it's a good show. It's funny. Oh. I'm not super deep into it. I'm a few episodes in definitely going to keep watching it. It's, it is, it, it like put me in a good mood. It puts me in a good mood after I watch it. So easily digestible, you know, half hour episodes, I can pop one out on my lunch break real quick or whatever. Um, so, but yeah, uh, good recommendation, Dean, very much enjoying Ted Lasso. It good. is fucking adorable. It's so pure and I enjoy it. So that is my brief review. All right. Well, Very I'm good. going to give you another one um, because, well, we've all been watching uh, Boba Fett and Peacemaker, but uh, mm-hmm. and I will go back to another one that I, I've been watching that you guys should take a look at if you get a chance. Uh, Resident Alien on Sci-Fi. Mm. Have you um, ever mentioned this before? I, I think I have in the past. I brought it up once or twice. Okay. It, it was I feel one like I've never. Heard I watched. That. I watched like half of the first season, and then I kind of 
uh, kind of just got busy and didn't go back to it. But I finally went back to it, and the second season started, so I'm caught up on that. And uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a fun show. It's another one. It's really weird, quirky. It's it's almost got a um, northern exposure vibe to it, but also with a, a comedy about an alien. Okay, maybe you did but, mention this before, but, but it's okay. not like and it's a, on sci-fi. It's not, yeah, it's on sci-fi, but I mean, you can okay. get it on demand, you know, wherever you're getting TVs, Hulu or uh, whatnot. Uh, Peacock even has it. So, uh, yeah, so I, I recommend uh, Resident Alien. And uh, again, Peacemaker is, uh, I mm. guess, I read an article that it's one of the highest rated shows like of the year of anything streaming, even above uh, anything, any of Star Wars or Marvel. Yeah. Yes, just super good. I love the storyline. I love the butterfly alien thing as a whole cool vibe. I love the soundtrack with all the 80s metal and stuff. And it's cool to see John Cena, his character is kind of evolving a little bit. Yes. And I love the vigilante. It's just all, every character is yeah, likable in his or her awesome. own way. So I I just I love it. I'm thoroughly entertained. I watched the yeah, new, new uh, episode tonight uh after it dropped. So Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Can I, I just say, it. I really like, and I think we've kind of spoke to this before, but I love that, you know, we've, we definitely harp on DC movies and, and content a lot mm -hmm. compared to Marvel. I love that they're really embracing not being this, like, family blockbuster movies you got to see on right. right. TV. I, li I, think, I think more so it works better for TV because sure. a lot of, I mean, I don't know about, you know, you guys and your, your relationships, but, like, Typically, when I sit down with my family, I'm watching movies because a lot of the I don't want to sit down and watch a lot of episodes of what my kids want to watch because we typically but we can do it for, you know, a lot of Disney Pixar thing, hour and a half, two hours, like whatever. We can intersect for that amount of time and watch a movie. So when I'm watching movies a lot, I'm watching a lot of kid friendly movies or family movies. But when it comes to TV series, that's that's me and the wife watching stuff as we're going to bed or whatever. Like we're just. It's I'm our just time. Saying, you're watching. And we friends. watch TV. Well, we do watch. We still watch a <laughs> fuck ton of Friends. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's we're more likely to sit down and watch TV series and watch it follow along together than for her and I to sit down and watch a movie. So I think like what I'm getting at by saying all this, Marvel, their movies are just don't even try. Like even like right like DC's like I enjoyed the new Suicide Squad. The new Batman's coming out. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I still don't think I'm going to sit in a theater and enjoy it to the same level. I'm a Marvel movie when I take my whole family there and we sit down and yeah, Marvel, like, well, it's awesome. They've, they've, they've perfected it. Also in the same token, the Marvel, grittier. TV, the Marvel TV series. I enjoyed WandaVision. Uh, Loki was cool, you know, and I've watched little bits, in, but I'm, I'm not even in those. Two, he didn't I'm not, watch fucking winter soldier. No, I'm not. I'm saying, but I've watched <laughs> episodes of the other ones. I'm not even in the ones that I really liked and watched all the way through. I'm not as into that stuff as I have been Peacemaker. And I think the reason I think that is that the DC stuff is more, it's better suited for TV series. It's more fun to watch in little hour snippets like that. And, you yeah. know, the, the, the comedy can be shittier and you can, you know, you can make bad jokes and no, I don't mean shitty like comedy, but I mean, it's, you can make bad jokes. You can, make, you know, it can. The language can be bad. Well, like, they all, it's also like tongue in cheek. They, I like in Peacemaker that they're that that is kind of tongue in cheek. They're not taking themselves super seriously. Yeah. yeah. And I like that the like the uber uh, obscure comic uh, references that they make. I Bat mean, they, might they, and yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, this week he's talking about how he beat um, uh, uh, Kite Boy. Yeah. I mean that's you can't be more fucking obscure than that. But like he's so yeah, and the way John Cena delivers it, he's so like you know, he's into it, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's he's, it was fight, a big he's accomplishment into that character. For him. Right. But yeah, it, it's so good. And also I think that I you know, the Marvel has um what's his name uh behind it? Uh Kevin Feige, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put James Gunn behind yeah. DC. Sure. Let, give let's him go more stuff. Yep, and let's just do James Gunn across the board and let him control it. It doesn't have to really direct everything, but make him in control of DC. Yeah, that, that humor, like you said, that does, that's uh, the scene tonight when he's in the class taking the <laughs> questions from the kids. I just love that. Yeah. It was like the it was like the school of rock type feel where he's right. making up nicknames for all the kids, and the one girl has a flash t-shirt, and he's like, 
you, the the female Alfred E. Newman. And she's like, <laughs> you know the Flash? She's like, yeah, he's a real douche or something like that. It's just Everybody like, thinks he's a D-bag. Hey, yeah, D-bag, that's right. And he said one room was IFing him across the room. Right. You know? So good. Just great stuff, yeah. Anyway, yeah, check that out. It's definitely not for kids, like we said before. No, no. Yeah. Great comic book adult stuff. Just, yeah, a lot of fun. I think if you accidentally put on Peacemaker and watched the first two minutes of the series, you would quickly understand. <laughs> you're yes, like, you're, you're like, right oh, about no, no, that. No, never mind. I mean, yeah. there was nudity it's... within the first five minutes. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. there's titties all about the, the show. Yeah. Uh, Just like this one. Go back to episode two. <laughs> that's all. That's all we'll say. Yep. That's right. Check it out for yourself. Keep mm-hmm. an eye out. All right. So Peacemaker's good. What else, Dean? And, we, and well, we talked a little bit about Boba Fett. Book Book of um, Book of Mandalorian. I mean, Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you haven't seen the Mandalorian in two episodes. I didn't miss him. I, I in two wrong. episodes. You didn't catch. Ca- do you want? Do you want to take your wait a minute uh, headphones off? No, you said you haven't seen the Mandalorian in two episodes. No, no, no. I called it the Book of Mandalorian. You haven't seen Boba Fett in two episodes. Okay, that's where. Okay, you yeah, said barely. You hadn't. Yeah. Okay, that's what confused me because you said you haven't seen the Mandalorian in two episodes, and I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah, wait, I, I, I misspoke. Many, how many have I missed? I have not seen the you, most you are, recent. You had so, that's yeah. the last one. So if you want to take your headphones off real quick. We'll okay, it so real quick. at this point, you guys talk. I will watch you guys, and you give me the hand signal when you're ready for me to come back. Right. Okay. 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 What they did with – we'll do it real quick. Uh, Brian, what they did with uh, uh, Mark Hamill, I mean, it, it is amazing the the whatever uh, deep fake uh, facial technology that they did. I mean, it, it's it's incredible. Yeah, it was pretty when they first brought him in for the Mandalorian. That was, was cool, a little, but it was a little shaky. Like you could see yeah. the the edges around the face. Yeah, but this one was, like you said, it's 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 it was just an actor with his with his body type, I guess, and they've done that facial capturing technology and voice capturing. Yeah, and it it wasn't like CGI ish. It I nope. felt like it was young Mark Hamill. Absolutely. There. Just Absolutely. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I love the whole training montage. I love the whole feel that the peaceful planet where he's training. Yep. And you mentioned uh what's her name? Oh, uh 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 Sokatana. Yeah. If if people didn't watch the Clone Wars cartoons, you don't know who Sokatana is, and you also don't know who Cad Bane is, who came uh, along as is another uh surprise cameo or whoever into this series and it was i was so excited to see him i'm watching him across that dune coming up I'm like oh it was it was like when i saw that x-wing with the r2 in the in, in the bottom mm-hmm. i'm like fuck cad bane holy shit and then they he looks so good i mean just he is the image of the cartoon just looks so good yeah i i'm enjoying these I love the storyline. I like whether, I mean, clearly it seems like Grogu is going to probably come back with the Mandalorian. I guess we'll see what happens. But right. I, at the same token, it's like a lot of people are talking about it. What is this series now? Is it really, is it, are they going to shift back to Boba Fett entirely? Are they well, gonna I think they will. I think, the, they, yeah. I think these two, you know how they used to do on TV shows when they do spinoffs where they would put, um, where would they, where they would have, one episode devoted to that what was going to be a spinoff character, and then get back to the mm-hmm. regular story. I think that's what they did. Right. They they wanted to give you a heads up of a Ahsoka, and mm-hmm. they kind of want to get you. I mean, I know it's Star Wars, and, and you everybody knows uh, uh, Luke Skywalker, but they kind of want to get you back into that feeling of wanting mm-hmm. to know the Skywalker uh, saga, which Obi Wan is going to do. It's going to be have that feel to it. I think. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what these two episodes do. It gives you a heads up and a preview of what's to come. I How think many episodes what... are there? Do you even know? Uh, next week's the finale. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. As far as I know, I, I I thought I looked up and I thought that was it. Okay. All right. I guess so we'll see. Whatever battle is going to happen, going to happen uh, next week. Is Han Solo going to come back? I think so. 
Yeah. It's, uh, I think you're going to get a, a, a younger version, deep fake version of Han Solo. Got to think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Well, I like it, but I'm not learning a whole bunch more about Boba Fett, but maybe nope. I don't need to know a whole lot more. I don't know. Again, if Boba Fett was a, if the book of Boba Fett was a one off season, I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. I got okay. what I wanted from it. All right. Yeah, it's, it's, you got to catch up, man. Yeah, last night was. That's one episode, cool. and it came out yesterday. No, no, Maybe. but I'm yeah. no, no. I'm <laughs> not cool. saying I'm not. Gotta I'm not up. chastising you because you didn't see it for the show. I'm saying just for a fandom, it's a good episode. You got oh, okay. it. Yeah, absolutely. Very excited. All right, guys. If you guys if you guys watch anything else to bring up, uh, that's it for me. I've watched a lot of hockey. I watched mm-hmm. some documentaries. But okay. n- nothing to, to, to share. Okay. I, I watched a movie that Robin watched the other day, and I don't even know what it was called or what platform it was on, but it was kind of about time travel or being stuck in time, and it was cute. It was interesting. Oh, yeah? About some, yeah. Too bad you I, missed that episode. I know, well, <laughs> that, and also I don't even know how to recommend that you watch it because I don't even know what it was called. Uh, I think Ooh, it was, was it an Amazon. Quantum Leap? No, it was an Amazon no. Prime movie or something with some young teenagers that were stuck in time like in a time loop it was almost like groundhog's day uh scenario where but like every day no matter what they did they woke up at the same time like uh, once midnight happened they would wake up and like they'd have to they had to try to figure out how to get out of the time loop basically um it would be fun you realize how much shit you could do well it would be that's and that's what this kind of explored is that it it was until it wasn't like it was It It was fun at first for them, and the one kid was, like, trying to figure out how to make... He's like, I'm trying to catch every perfect thing, like, to do every day at the same time. Like, there was this guy he would save from stepping out and being shat on by a bird every day. Like, and it was, you know, just these things he would pick up, but he, as they're going through life, he happened to find this other girl who was also stuck in this daily time loop with him. Oh, no, no, no. And that was kind of... uh, uh, What's his name from from, uh, Lost Lonely Boys in... uh, 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 what is the show? Uh, uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Uh, I don't know. SNL? I didn't. I didn't rec- No, I didn't recognize the kid. Not Pete Davidson, but uh, <laughs> who am I thinking of? From the Lost Boys. Lost Lonely Boys. Um, Dick Lost in the Box. Lonely Boys is a band. Yes. No, no, the no. Lonely Island. Lonely Island Boys. Jesus oh, uh, Andy Samberg. Andy but Samberg. That's not him. He has a, no. But he has a movie like it. Okay. It's really funny. It's on Hulu. Okay. If you check that out. But it it has a similar plot. But it's Andy okay. Samberg. So, I got. Is what it is. Right. So, you smell like farts. Go to bed. <laughs> Don't worry. Nobody watches. You're fine. <laughs> so, my son is going to bed. I love him very much. Wow. Well. Kind of smells like farts sometimes, but I love him. Yes! Actually, I have two boys, and their entire both of their rooms smell like farts all the time. So it's not just him. Jerk. Yeah. Okay. I love you. Go to get it. Anyway, but yeah, I don't. I. I. Sorry, I went, didn't mean to turn that into a whole tangent. But I. Uh, I. I don't even know how to tell you what. I'll have to look it up and, and let you guys know. But it was. It was a good movie. I was interested in it immediately after watching it for a little bit. But uh, yeah, it was cool. You yeah, just maybe. have a lot of. You just have a lot of freedom to to, to go about every day. It, right. Just free, free caring, not caring right. what happened because you, you. You know, it's just natural life and freedom. If you're also you want freedom in your life, you want freedom mm-hmm. of 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 just not again not caring. You want to have good mm-hmm. insurance that gives you that sense of freedom and security that you need in your life. And if you don't have time travel, you're going to have to go with Blake Insurance. <laughs> Blake Insurance is an Erie insurance agency located in Barberton, Ohio. They provide auto, home, renters, business, and life insurance with honesty, decency, and affordability. Erie Insurance is above all else in service. You want to call 234-571-5359 or visit BlakeLLC.com for your free five-minute quote today. And make sure you tell them Convincing Idiots sent you. Very good. Absolutely. Excellent. Another thing that I can uh, not insure but rather assure you is mm-hmm. if you're listening to the podcast version of this, you might hear a lovely voice telling you a way that you could someday be like your heroes here on the show and start your own podcast that's right yeah so once you listen to that if you're on podcast 
and we will be back with some headlines some and dope beats. Dean has some very fun questions. He asks us about embarrassing things, stories, things we like, and we're we'll oh, into that yeah. in the next segment. So we'll be back. Cringe worthy people, right stay this. tuned. That's right. are back here at Convincing Idiots. That's right. We have come back just for you, just for you to listen to us. I'm Millennial Nick. I'm here with Gen X Brian and Zenial Dean, and we are here coming in hot. Hope you enjoyed that break. We enjoyed that break. We're I love so that voice. So full of energy. Love it. So full of energy. So ready Hands to come. don't fit right anymore. Absolutely not, as they shouldn't, or else I wouldn't be doing my job correctly. That's right. So uh, we are back for section two of this podcast. Uh, this is about the time where 75% of our listening audience of three drops off drastically. <laughs> so only a few or one or half of and you are the listening lucky to us ones. at this point. <laughs> the ones that stick yes. around, you're the lucky That's ones, right. especially today. Because this, is you where... be... this is where the magic happens. This is where it happens. Mm-hmm. Honest. This is where um, it gets good. This is where the deep cuts are, right? This is where when we really take off one day, you get to sit in a bar and be like, Deep references that nobody gets, yep. and you're like, they don't know. They're not especially the real. They're this not epi- part of the army. They especially don't know. this episode, Nick, because this is the episode. If you've listened this far and you're coming to the second half of it, you get to now know our innermost deep secrets. What Oof. embarrasses us? What makes us cringe about yeah. ourselves? So now you're tied to us like forever because right. like you're becoming one with us in this segment. It's too late. You're already on the Binding. ride. The uh, the restraints have been locked in. Mm-hmm. You are taken off up the track. So buckle in. Here we go. So grab your dicks. Let's do this. Ready? Let's do this. Mm-hmm. But my first question, because I wanted, I was thinking to myself, what we all enjoy embarrassment of other people, correct? Sure, I would say so. Especially yes. your friends when when something embarrassing them, we get the good laugh. But you have that douche chill if you're that person being laughed at. You had that um, that embarrassment. That everybody knows that feeling of that pure embarrassment. So I just wanted to, to find out, pop culturally, what are some of our embarrassments? And like I said, Dr. Johnny Fever was on the radio, so I'm going to start with music. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you guys come up with different questions also, let, let's hear them. Um, I just got a, 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 a quick lining of questions. So I'm going to start with, gentlemen, what is your most embarrassing song that you love? Like, what is your douche chill song that if you, somebody walked in, and again, it doesn't have to be like, oh, ultimately, oh, I'm going to fucking piss myself. No, it could be just like, oh. Wow, like that's you're, a you're song. Gonna, all right, here's my perfect example of it. What is the song you're go, driving down the road singing your ass off to, but when you pull up at a red light and then people pull up next to you, you turn it down. You know what I mean? Or you roll up the windows. I have one. I can start. Um, if this song comes on the air or, you know, there's my age, if if I play it on You're listening wherever, to the radio? <laughs> right. How weird. Actually, I, so this song, um, it is uh, Like a Pill by Pink. That's a good song. That's a fucking banger. I will, I'm not going to lie. I will fucking sing it like I am on stage with pink fucking hair. We're rock and run just as fast as yep. I can. That's that, a great it, song. But, yeah. but if, but if like, somebody walks in, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm turning that shit. Okay. It, it, that's my cringe. Uh, that's my cringe. That's my embarrassment song. Okay. But I love it. But I love it. You, you got me into I'm, a place now with your example. Because I, I really... I'm not going to lie to you. I struggled with this stuff. You you gave us you struggle the, with most things. 
I do. I do. I struggle a lot. Life in general really can be a struggle for me. Uh, but I struggled with thinking. Cause to grow a beard, too. <laughs> that is a very real struggle. Um, no, but I struggle to think of because I, I think I, in my mind, I think of embarrassment differently because I, it's it's not to come off as like confident or whatever, any of the cocky or anything like that. I just don't. Um, I I think of embarrassment different. So like even if it's something that is not something that someone would peg me necessarily to listening to, I'm not embarrassed of it per se. He's also not being because uh, he's also not embarrassed about being pegged either. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Actually, if you look on the right websites, it's right there for everyone mm-hmm. to see. That's right. Um, but no, like uh, I think probably like an like uh, I get seriously pumped when "Crazy" by Britney Spears comes on. Like that, you drive me crazy. Like from the first one, from the first okay. album. That, it, but it's like I'm not embarrassed to say I like the song. But okay, in the moment, if I'm driving down the road and, and somebody's if, like, like guys, you drive guys me look crazy, like you, right. if, I'm just if getting the it, guys look like, like you drive up next to you. I yeah, it might be a little. You're, you're turned down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So like, oh, that would, how did the, that or, one, or a great example is like like if you're with your friends or whatever. Um, and your, your podcast is on shuffle and one of those songs come on and you, and you know, it could be, so you're like, your fingers close to it. So, you know, to hit fucking skip before they can like hash out the note that's coming on. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So crazy by Britney Spears. That's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I believe so. Yeah. And th- th- there could be multiple guys. I mean, yeah. Well, like I don't, so like. I would go into that and be like, I'm not embarrassed to say that, like, I enjoy, I play it up a little bit to aggravate Dean because I know you do not like this particular artist, but I do enjoy Celine Dion. And it's, but it's almost in a, I play it up, it's in a dramatic sense. Mm-hmm, but I do, mm-hmm. I do enjoy Celine Dion. I like Celine sure. Dion. Uh, I love One Direction. And I don't, I'm not turning that shit down for fucking anybody <laughs> because they're the best goddamn boy band that's ever graced this earth. I don't care if you think I should like them or not. One Direction is the real fucking deal. Take that shit to the bank. So right. that is something that people might perceive to be embarrassing. Gotcha. Also, for me, Millie Vanilli is another big one. Love Millie Vanilli, and I'm not playing that up. I love Millie Vanilli. Oh no, I I'm not turning that down. Do. I'm not turning that one down. No, that's, that's my generation. That's that whole my, album, would, that whole album yeah. is great. The girl you know is true. Album is fantastic. Yep. I don't care if they were singing or not. It was great. Right. What about you, Brian? What's embarrassing you? What would you be like? Not. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in this. Old. These answers here. Yeah. I'm sort of like with Nick. It's this guy. I I like what I like, and I really don't care what. But you, you don't have like a pop it. song out there. No, or no, a I, girl, it's you funny. Know. Okay. I smile. I smile when when Nick mentioned uh, One Direction. So mm-hmm. one one of the ones on my list is What a Feeling by One oh. Direction. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yes. Now, <laughs> I, I, as, as, now, of course, as you guys know, and and if you listen to us a couple of times, you know that I have a daughter and. You know, for many years, and that's all makes me think of those years too. Because as a teenager, I learned quickly that if my daughter's in the car with me, and I've said this on prior episodes. If I you want had your daughter as, when you were a teenager, <laughs> I got, I, maybe another one out there somewhere. That's yeah. we're waiting, we're waiting for the <laughs> right. test. Waiting for, waiting the for test. that knock on the door. Right. Uh. Anyway, but it, 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 if I went to her in the same world as me in the car, I learned give just give her control of the music. Who cares? It's either that or she's going to put her her, you know, earbuds in. And I'm not going to re- you know, we're not going to interact in this. So she got sure. to control of the music for many years. But that was nice because it exposed me to, to different music. It allowed her to share her music with with her dad. It was just fun. So that that song there reminds okay. me of those years when she's a teenager and we're riding around in my car. Dad and daughter time. It's just very, very nice. So it's you know that it has a lot of sentimental meaning for me. But as far as I'm with you, I don't give a shit. I like the song. That's but fun. it's not something you're going to be. It's not going to be something uh, when the when the guys from your other podcast get together. You're not popping that on the radio. Probably not. Right. No, probably not. But I I love I, I love this. Song. I had a couple other ones. Too. These are kind of getting into the '80s or two. But mm-hmm. Betty Davis eyes, Kim Carnes. That fucking song comes <laughs> okay. on. Okay. Stop everything. Sure. I love it. It's one of the highest selling singles of the entire decade, literally. Uh, just, you know, if you don't know the song, I mean, it, if, you're from the, if you're from my generation, you definitely know the song. So, right. And also, the second that 
Caribbean Queen comes on also by Billy oh, Ocean. Oh, hell yeah. Don't be afraid. Don't you do, do no, never, no. never, ever hell be ashamed no. of Billy Ocean. Never. I never. Love. Now we in the same Actually, we Hold on. Wait, 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 No. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Nick, Nick, yeah, we can get flagged on YouTube if you sing the whole fucking song. <laughs> we don't sound like Billy Ocean. It's not the fucking song. It's I think you song. do. I think it's if you have. I think it's an algorithm. You no, think I, I sound I like know. Billy Ocean? <laughs> 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 took way too long to get that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> no. Yeah, and then it, it virtually every, <laughs> almost every disco song, really, you name it. It's, I, I just love You're... disco. Bee Gees. Wow. Okay, I mean, stuff. I get Bee Gees, but I didn't know, like, in general, no. disco. Okay. Love, yeah. love it, love it, love it. My mom had disco records. You should records. feel embarrassed. I don't care. <laughs> so, the disco song I comes care. on. I, I, I virtually only, 99% of the time, I probably have this 70s station on when I'm listening okay. to music on for Sirius XM. I just love all that shit. Love it. With that said, Brian, if you don't come as John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever for mm. Halloween, you have done something wrong. Because I want to see that silk shirt unbuttoned sure. down to here, <laughs> tight brown pants or black, whatever they were, bell bottoms. Yeah. Yep. yeah. There's yeah, Halloween the pants. Mm -hmm. Sure. I love it. So like that brings it. up a good conversation because it kind of ties into what I was thinking. Okay. So, Brian, you're, you're embarrassed a little bit in general of, not embarrassed, but... Disco is the one that, because you, when you said you like disco in general, and Dean's like, wouldn't yeah. you have thought that? My embarrassing genre mm -hmm. is new metal. Like, for 100% of the time, if I was down, if I'm in a mood that strikes me or I'm feeling nostalgic and I'm bumping corn, Godsmack, Disturbed, Limp Biscuit, I'm mm -hmm. turning that down 100 out of 100. I want no one to know that I was ever into that. Hold I'm on. not proud of that. Am I supposed to be embarrassed? I know by it's, that? yes. I mean, you don't know. That, that's my no. shit. That's my. That's you what don't I have fucking... to be embarrassed of it. Okay, I was gonna say that's my twenties. That's that's what I. That right. Dig. But like, I'm not that's proud. Yes, I am not proud to. I don't feel it aged well. I'm not proud to be caught listening to that in today's world. I don't want anyone hmm. to know that I was ever in love with those okay. bands because I don't hmm. like any of them anymore. Fair enough. Okay. No, I I am legitimately embarrassed. That's my go-to when I'm. I am embarrassed when I'm to in my be truck. caught listening to that style of music. I'm like, no, hmm. wow. not anymore. Okay. No. So it almost seems like that you probably would be embarrassed to be my friend, but I know that can't be the case. Um, no, <laughs> that's <laughs> not on, at that, all that's, why. That would just be silly. I never share our stuff on Facebook. I haven't seen you actually in a very. Anyways, <laughs> next question, gentlemen. <laughs> Next question. We went from songs. Let's go quick to uh, TV shows. Is is there a TV show out there that that you that you would be embarrassed? Uh, now wait a minute. Somebody walked Before in the room. We... Yeah, hold on, Nick. Your answer should be easy because my answer is because of the woman you live with. Because I lived with her first, and and she, she would get me into these sh where she would be watching <laughs> these shows, so she'd have control of the TV. So in turn, I would just be watching them going. Okay, and then uh, after a while, I know the fucking characters, I know what's going on, and I'm not proud of it. Okay. Now, uh, I would never watch these shows now where somebody would walk in and I have to turn it off, but I'm embarrassed that I, if somebody said, hey, who is this doctor? And I was like, I'm throwing out the answer because I'm confident because I watched it for so many years with Robin. Gotcha. So, well... Uh, just real quick, we don't have to talk about oh, mine. Oh, yeah, no. Mine real quick well, is, is Grey's Anatomy. Okay, yeah, yeah. Or I can give you... That's a good show, though. It's uh, Yeah, I guess okay. I can see. It's not one you would not watch on show. your own. It's not I don't a think show. it's a bad show. I just, uh, it wouldn't... Okay, it's not bad, but it ain't good. It's been on for fucking years. Like, it can't be that I mean, bad. First of all, my problem with it has always been is, why would you have a girl that, that had such a light face... Uh, be the star of your of your number one show. Never made sense. A what light face? face? Light face? Is that terminology uh, in the in the industry? Or um, does that just no, mean she's too it, pale. No, it means like in some light she's ugly, in some light she's hot. That's a yeah. Did you come up with that on your own? I did. I did. That's actually really good. I mean, once you Thank explain you. it to me, that right. accurately like, like, represents like her. If, I feel. Like if like one I would angle and a light is like a two-face? Like, uh, yes. Yeah, kind of like two-face. Face. Yeah. That was yeah. on Seinfeld. Right. right. 
Yeah. But this one, this one, it's not like, oh, she turned around, but it, it's the same concept. Yes. Gotcha. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and you turn around, you're like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Like, how is that yeah. the same person? Yeah. Okay. I don't think Grey's Anatomy is an embarrassing show because I think it's it's more like any, actually, a lot of those doctor shows for me are really uh, about like the uh, relationships with the patients and what's going on in that episode. And some of them are pretty intriguing. So but I don't. There was a lot of intertwining of like nurses oh, yeah, and doctors. Sure. That's the shit. Yeah, that... for sure. Yeah. Was that's where Jeffrey and, Dean, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Was it Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dean Morgan got his start? Was on Grey's Anatomy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was that. Uh, he was the patient uh, of uh, uh, Catherine Heigl. Yes. Correct. Yeah. That's. <laughs> I didn't actually know how much I knew about that show until you start saying that stuff, <laughs> right. and I can actually right? identify that you are correct. Uh-huh. That is. Yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. That is a thing. And so, now I... I'm kind of getting douche chills <laughs> down the back of my neck. So <laughs> you guys go because I'm done yeah. talking about uh, yeah. Grace Anatomy. <laughs> I've got to prove my fucking point of of my answer. Go I ahead, would boys. say mine is, and it's a show that I didn't even start watching. I, I think I, it might have been a girl. I, I've seen multiple seasons of America's Top Model. And I'm not, I realize that that is hey. something that should be a, a shameful statement. But mm-hmm. I genuinely enjoy the shit out of that show. And I recognize the art and what they do. And I really love that show. Like, there would be times when I'd be bugging Robin. I'm like, I think there's a new America's Next Top Model. We haven't watched it yet. <laughs> like, I fucking, like, let's get on that shit. Like, I love America's Next Top Model. I have the new I love, shows for him. <laughs> I love the judges panel. I love what they have to do. I love the inter-house thing. It's, it's just, it's great. I love America's Next Top Model. And then you okay. have your favorites that you root for. Some of them because you're attracted to them. Some of them because you're like, they kill every shoot. Like, why would you not? Like, they have to win. And then I get sure. mad when they don't win, and like it's all that stuff. So mm-hmm. America's Next Top Model is, but it, it's not the one that embarrasses me the most because I, I just there's love it too fucking much. one worse than that. There is. If I had to pick my all time right. right. most embarrassing show that I can say I enjoyed. Now I will back this up with saying I did not enjoy it to the level of America's <laughs> Next Top Model. I have not seen every episode of it. Mm-hmm. However, when it has been on. I'm familiar with it in the same way that I am Grey's Anatomy because I just watch it when it's on. Right. Like I just I take some sort of innate interest in it, and mm-hmm. so I'm somewhat familiarized with it. I'd probably have to be Gilmore Girls. <laughs> I Gilmore Girls is the one. It's, okay. it's I know that there's nothing right. there for me. I know they're not coming for me. They are not looking for this audience. I wasn't looking for them either. <laughs> with the but interest Lorelei of what you have, Rory, nobody's going to come for you. Lorelai and Rory and their endeavors in life and in the heart as mother and daughter have warmed their way into my heart and soul, and I can't look away from Gilmore Girls. All right. It's not the fandom of a Friends or a a Top Model or any of the other shows that I watch, but I I watch it when it's on, and I enjoy them. They're just wonderful. Gilmore Girls is is mine. All right. That's good. That's a good one. Yeah. Brian, what about Brian, you? Brian, can you beat that? <laughs> I, I I don't know. There's Do I get a nothing. prize at the end? <laughs> yeah, I think you should. I think I know what kind of prize I'm going to get, especially after they put it, Girls is my favorite. Can they put a douche chill on a trophy? <laughs> I don't know how you do that, but... <laughs> Brian, what I, do you got? Now, this series aired from 2007 to 2009, and at the time... For me, it was like stop everything. It was like if, if there was one show a week, I would watch. Mm-hmm. It was it was this motherfucking show for as long as it aired. If it was still airing today, I would still. Did you get watch. into the? Did you get into said show by yourself, or did somebody get you into like Robin got no, us into a lot of own. these shows? Completely on my own. Okay. okay. Completely on my own. I watched the first episode. I'm like I completely hooked hooked in. Uh, it was Brett Michaels, Rock of Love. <laughs> so, yeah. Brett, Brett, Brett Michaels of, of Poison. Oh, yeah, rea- yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, yeah. So, if you don't know, it was a reality show where, well, quote unquote, reality. <laughs> but they, oh, I just. But basically, we want to see Brett Michaels have sex with a lot of women. That's, that's what we want to see. We like that. We want to see it. And you got to see it. It was pretty, but it was a whole dating thing. He was like, sure. you know, yeah. 
It was The Bachelor know. or The Bachelorette, but for a <laughs> rock star. Before, or a washed-up rock star. It was before yes. all that stuff. It was before, and it's like, I gotta believe, a show like that probably inspired some of these other ridiculous sure. shows at the time. But I, I, I just loved it. The train wreck of some of the girls that was in there. I like Brett Michaels, Brett Michaels anyway. Uh, just, anyway. I... What, it, if it, like I said, it was still on the air today, I don't care what he is today. Sure. Right now, 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 now Nicholas, I feel like, yes. Nicholas, do you, do, you in, in, do you have a picture in your head of Brian with an Afghan over his lap and a, and sure. a big bag of popcorn? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you go, Brett. You bang the shit out of that trash. <laughs> Get oh, no. <laughs> he didn't. No, he didn't. That's, that was probably it. That was Yo, probably you better very go. accurate. Yeah. Right. Now I w- I will say I I feel like VH1 is being overlooked massively. I didn't even think sure. about them, but VH1 I didn't had some serious trash. Like that they was serious, did. That they was were trying it. to compete yeah. with MTV's like shitty mm-hmm. shows, and right. that was kind of like just they, well they did they they mm-hmm. kind of did it. It was just a little high. The generation was a little bit above Before bought by MTV. Well, right. So it, VH1 got you know the the little older generation, yeah, mm-hmm. in their trash TV. That's yeah. what it was. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I will say, based off of that, I do watch. I I I become through some sort of osmosis. I become interested in The Bachelor every season or Bachelorette, depending on what Robin's watching. Mm. So that's that, and, you, and you that made, off, it's not you easily going to let off with that one as well. <laughs> that well, that's not as good as Brian's. I mean. Rock of Love was a whole different because it, that's exactly what it is. It's Mm-mm. a take off of that, but it's like no let's way. make this no trashier. Way. Let's make no. it trashier. Yeah. Let's make it shittier. But, like but let's make it is, is yours because your at least his has a rock star involved who he not loved anymore. It. But he it's not it's like Brett Michaels back in like okay, ninety. Get, it's Brett Michaels in two thousand seven. Yeah, yeah, but you just learn about The Bachelor twenty minutes before the show starts, and then you enjoy it like you know, like right? All but the when you look at The Bachelor, club. this is a twenty something single good-looking man or woman looking for love they bring another a bunch of hot people that look like them and you know what i mean they they do no, challenges I don't <laughs> you know what the bat don't pretend like you don't know what the bachelor is even if you've never watched an episode there's a rose ceremony you know the whole fucking thing but it's you know what i mean you know what i'm saying like with rock of love they take it and they do that but it, yeah, you can't act like Rock of Love <laughs> is not as bad as The Bachelor. The Bachelor is mainstream. Rock of Love. Okay. I'm not saying, and this is no disrespect to anyone here. I watched episodes of Rock of Love. I get it. I'm sure. just saying it that that was they took it that and they're like, let's amp it up. Let's make it about oh, yeah. a washed up rock star, and mm-hmm. we're gonna find the trashiest people we can find that would oh, be yeah. into this guy, and that's what it was. I mean, it's you know what I mean. It was. It's not people looking for family values. It's like these girls are like, <laughs> no, "How much no. can I? How much tequila can I drink? How many times can I take my clothes off on the pool table? How many times? <laughs> like it's just yeah. ridiculous shit. It's just over the top." And so I, I do, I admire that pick. That is a very good one. Could you imagine what boys? What we could have done if we uh, three of us were single? We could do idiots of love. Sure, idiots of and love. It would be so trashy mm-hmm. and cringeworthy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. would love it. I mean, then those Definitely. would just be your girls. Like mine and Brian's would probably be like very el- eligible uh, bachelorettes. But that's yours would all be Brian's there. Like... Gonna, that's, that's only because all Brian's are going to be retirees. <laughs> <laughs> those those ladies over there playing bingo are very well behaved. That must be Brian's corner. <laughs> what do you think about the one sleeping in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> she might be dead, what? but we don't know. What's that goddamn noise? Oh, that's Dean's girls rustling in the living room again. <laughs> Play mock wrestling. Next thing you know, jelly in the couch again. Fuck. Brian's girls are calling the police on Dean's girls, and yeah, we're just downstairs watching Jeopardy. Just relaxing. Where's Nick? Well, they got yeah. carted before they came in. They're not allowed in. Yep. <laughs> Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune have a Bloody Marys. We're having a. Hey, I just I just DM the One Direction fan club. I don't know what the problem is with mine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. In sixty minutes. <laughs> All right. All right. So what we're gonna go. Uh, we got one more before our stories. Yes. Yes. Um, we can move click as you guys want to, but uh, last one is movies. Do you have a cringeworthy movie, Brian? How about you go first on this one? 
I had to think about this because it's the same again, same type of thing. I really don't care what people think about my tastes in movies. Sure. Really, I'm thinking about what are movies that I like that every person I've shown them to thinks they're just stupid. Okay, that's, you know that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So one of one of them is the from from 2001, the the horror movie. Sorry, you all right. Yeah, it had a cough. I didn't. I thought that would work covering it, but it didn't. I heard it. No. All. Sorry. It was louder than Brian speaking, actually. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Fuck, I'm sorry. Just like this you. is my cringeworthy moment. <laughs> uh, 2001, Jason X. Have you heard of Jason X? I feel like was I Was that the no. one where he beat the girls up in the oh, sleeping bag up against no. the tree? No. Well, no. Space. Because that's, no. that yes. okay. that's the greatest scene in cinema history is when he put the girls in the sleeping and beat them up against trees. That was pretty extreme. But Jason X is Friday the 13th, 10, technically. And the premise is, like Nick said, Jason gets frozen. The Earth has, goes into like a you know post-apocalyptic oh, world. That is the same movie. Because that's, a, that's the scene of it. It's his dream. That's just before he comes out of the cessation. Uh, okay. You're right. He's okay. in that dream. Yes, that's the same movie. Absolutely. Okay. There you go. And then, and then fast forward. Jason's in outer space. Yep. Jason's in outer space, and they have the. Uh, he gets the uh, nanobots, whatever he gets, and then he gets re- remade as like a Terminator-ish type Jason thing, and all that. One of the most ridiculous horror movie concepts that's not good. of all time, but it's Jason in outer space. That's it. I'm like, I'm there. I don't care. I saw, I, I saw it in a theater. It was like, it was like four of us in the whole theater to go see it. Don't care. Had a great, great time, and love it. There you one go. Of the, one of the most stupidest movies of all time. Definitely one of the most ridiculous horror movies of all time. Love it. And then another, and again, another one. I, I love it. I think it's hilarious. I'm thinking, if you watch this movie, you got to think it's funny. It's like. It's like trying to convince people. We said last week, you, you must Rush. like the Bay and Rush, right? <laughs> right. You have to like this movie. It's so funny and interesting. And the airplane. Walk car- no. Well, well <laughs> I'm not a airplane's a funny movie. Fuck you. You just yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought that's where you're going. I don't know. Nope. No, you don't have to convince most people that airplane's funny. If you like the type of humor, you right. think airplane is funny. Uh, Maybe One Direction fans you have to convince, but sure. <laughs> But Walk Hard in 2007. You're God, the Dewey movie. Cox story? Fuck, yes. I love that movie. Dewey Cox story, yes. And I looked it up it's tonight. So it's so absurd. Like, the tomato meter, is, it's certified fresh. And this makes sense. It's it's a 74% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, so it's it's fresh. But, mm-hmm. the, but the audience score is like 57%. So it's got the, the... So people go see... They just don't get it. So critics understand it. The average person just doesn't really... Get the humor. It's almost like, like an humor. art house movie. Kind of, yeah. But you know, I to to me, this is one of John C. Riley's funniest movies. Absolutely. Him and Tim Meadows in this it, it, just hilarious running concept. gag of like when he's trying gets him to do drugs. Each yeah. level, Fuck yeah. It. Or even the scene, and, and and it made me laugh the most in that movie was the scene when he's on the phone and the the fucking guy with. The no pants with a dick right in his face. <laughs> Fuck, that's funny. Yeah, it's just like, you're like I, I don't know. How could an actor? I mean, that's it's not CGI. There's a dick just <laughs> next to his face as he's trying to talk, and he's like in a serious conversation. Oh, yeah. it's so funny. <laughs> Except every every person I watched it with thinks it's stupid. I'm just like, God, it's, uh, is it me? And I'm like, no, it's a funny no. movie. I don't care. No, you don't You don't need to be friends with them, Brian. You don't need that okay. negativity in your life. All right. Watch this movie. John C., it's, it's a parody of all Nick, these. you've seen like, it, right? Mon- I've seen bits and pieces of it. I wanted okay. to watch it because Eddie Vedder is in it. But Eddie Vedder's in yeah. it as like a candidate. Right. He's presenting yep. him with an award yes. or whatever. But Correct. Yes. I knew Eddie Vedder was in it, and I'm like, got to see this movie. But mm-hmm. uh, I don't know that I've ever seen it all the way through. I've seen the piece that Eddie Vedder's in, so. The timeline makes no sense, really. No, nope. too. It, but it's it's just it makes it funny. It's and absurd. It's, even, it's ridiculous. It's even, it's even funny that John C. Riley is playing I mean, a teenage boy right. as himself with with actual right. teenage boys <laughs> playing in his band. Right. And it's it. It's so it's is it what? like it's a parody, right? Of yes, like it's a, a uh, it's it, a spoof it, movie, like a not another teen a, movie or a no, scary it's a, movie. It's like a Johnny Cash, correct? Yeah, but about music, right? 
Right. Yeah. Walk the line, but it's it's him. But it, right. it's like he, he starts in the fifties. Rock is born, and it carries him through. Then he he it rises and falls. It gets into drugs in the seventies and sixties. It's just a whole meets different celebrities that obviously he would never met. Right. Right. It's it's like I said. Every single. I'm glad you like it, Dean. Maybe we'll have a oh, viewing sometime. So good. Time. Yeah. We'll, I actually we'll, own it. Okay. Very yeah. good. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, Nick, we should go visit your neighbor some evening. Yeah, yeah. Watch that, that movie; yep. it'll be a, it'll be funny. Trust me. Yep. Anyway, that's that's why I got There's a couple of movies that came to mind there. Um, Nick, you want to go? Or you want me to go? Go ahead. You go ahead. All right. All right. I just have one. Um, mine is, and this movie um came about where I was with a uh, a date, and she wanted to put this movie okay, on. Okay, so this this story is fake, basically. No, it, it's not fake. Girls, <laughs> some some girls want to date me, mm. and 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 kiss me and stuff. Mm. It's a thing. It's a thing. Mm. It's like, no, no, it is. No, it is. no. You, get you just turned me into Brian with my judgmental <laughs> hmms. <laughs> mm. right. So, so the girl comes over. We're sitting on the couch. Let's watch a movie. Okay. So I flip it on. Within like literally five minutes, he's passed out sleeping. And it's like a two-hour fucking movie. And I watch it all. And I was into it. I dug it. I don't think I would watch it. Or if somebody came into the room, I would be, I'd flip it in the next station or whatever. But that movie was The Notebook. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I dug the story. It was a good story. The acting yep. was pretty good. Uh, the girl in it. can't go wrong know. with Ryan Gosling and Rachel that, McAdams. Those are two of the yep. most beautiful man and woman duos right. you could possibly have. <laughs> My Rachel McAdams is quite easy on the eyes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ryan but, Gosling? Yeah. Canadian dream. My God. Right. So, yeah. I was I watched the whole thing and dug the shit out of it, but it is definitely one of those movies where I don't admit how much I liked it, and I would turn it, you know, I'd flip it to the next station or whatever somebody walked in. So, yeah. The I feel, though, as much as I feel like there's so much of men across the board would say that, that it's mm -hmm. almost mainstream to like it. You know what I mean? Like, okay. there's, I'm one of them, too. I've seen The Notebook, and I'm like, that's a great movie. Actually, no shocker. Robin's like, that movie sucks. And I'm like, it does not suck. <laughs> yeah, she's, she, well, it's she's more great, man than we are. So I know, but I'm like, <laughs> you don't even understand. Like, maybe you didn't see it all. Like, maybe you didn't really, like, feel it like everybody else feels it because right. it's awesome. But I know a lot of guys that are like that. That, And I feel like it's almost played out. Like, almost yeah, like a lot of dudes are no like, oh, if I, mean, I had okay. to pick I mean, it. Yeah, I thought it was okay, too, I guess. So with my time in The Bachelor or Bachelorette, mm -hmm. like, what's your chick like? A lot of guys put in their bios that they like the notebook, right? Maybe they're doing that to get the but like I feel like sure. a lot of dudes actually like the notebook because like it's yeah, just I like it was movie. a good it was a good movie. I don't even feel like you should be embarrassed by that. Like I feel okay. like a lot of guys like the notebook. I'd like All to right. hear from people on our social media accounts if there's other dudes out there that enjoy the notebook because I bet there fucking are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody's listening that. this far into the podcast, but nope. if they are, I would like to hear if they like the notebook. Um Nick, what do you I would got? like to I would like to say that uh, along the same lines of Brian is what I was thinking. I'm not embarrassed to like this movie. I think it's funny. Jingle but I way. I have huh, I see I knew you were going to do that shit because what, what as did soon you as say? I pulled the as soon I said as, jingle all the way. As soon as I pulled the airplane <laughs> I shoot, honestly thought you said Joy Luck Club. I'm like, "Wow, that would be impressive if that was his choice." As soon as I pulled the airplane <laughs> card, I'm like, "I know that fucking jingle all the way shit's coming back. I know somebody's going to call that out." Um of a, a movie that I find it difficult to find other people to find it as funny as I do is Little Nicky. Now, I understand mm, I, that Little Nicky is not I for agree. everybody. I agree. I do not find it funny. I think Little Nicky is fucking awesome, and it's one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies, but I understand that it's not... Like, I his, get why not everybody likes it. worst comedy. But it's after Happy Gilmore... And pro like I don't even know where it's the top three. Like it's one of my top three favorite Adam Sandler movies. Happy Gilmore will always be first, but I could debate mm -hmm. where it falls in that. But I think it's probably because of the quotability and the in my house we quoted a lot. We had a lot of fun with it. It was I like I don't know I don't really know why. It just for some reason I enjoyed the jokes in it. I enjoyed the different you know one-liners, catchphrases, whatever. I I like Little Nicky a lot, but I. 
have a hard time finding people that also enjoy Little Nicky. So that's probably mine. It's not it's embarrassing, but it's the most Oh, I get it obscure. though. But also like there's I was going to I didn't think of it until towards closer when it was my turn because I was going to lay you guys out a list of some of my movies that I'm like, I don't know if people find them funny or not, but I feel like they're not, you know, not a lot of people like Ready to Rumble immediately came to mind. Same deal. Not a great movie. David Arquette. uh, I can't remember the name of the guy. He's on, um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, He was on the new Miami Vice well, Oliver Platt played the wrestler that they were enamored yes. with, but the other guy with David Arquette is... Oh, oh, uh, Khan. Uh, James Khan's son. Uh, Scott Khan. Scott Khan. Okay. Yeah. So, two wrestling, you know, they're nuts, and they, you know, are in love and with this guy. And surprisingly, I am the, I am the uh, uh, wrestling fanatic in this trio. Do not like I Ready have, to Rumble? I, am, I have never seen it. Okay. I don't see, and honestly, yeah. I don't know if in, like, right now time, if you would, like, enjoy Ready to Rumble. I don't know. At the time, I did. We were super into wrestling, and it was funny. Like, there's a lot of, like, one-liners and reactions to things that I find funny, but I don't know if that's nostalgia-based or if it's, like, mm-hmm. this is funny. Like, okay. there's certain movies you can go back and watch and go, you know, this is hilarious, and I can identify it because... We quote this all the time because of this, right. you know, whatever versus different ones that you go, you know, maybe it's not, you know, it's nostalgic for me. It's not funny to a lot of people. It's funny to me. That's little Nicky for me. It's funny to me, but I don't know a lot of people that enjoy that movie. Yeah, I, I do not. You know what I, I am embarrassed by, though? Typically, I have been embarrassed by I find most commonly in my everyday life, like not day to day, every single day. Ha ha, beat you to that one. But more so in like, I feel like there's certain scenarios that it's embarrassing to me. Like when I can't, if you're, if someone's watching and there's like a certain sort of feat that you can't perform, something you can't do. Let's mm-hmm. say like you're, you're running in a race or something like that. And you know, a uh, uh, little skinny, scrawny kid like outruns you or whatever. You feel like you should beat them. Or let's say you're like, I don't know, you're, somebody's watching, you're, you're pedaling a bike uphill or something. You're going really hard, but like you just give out or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what could save you a lot of embarrassment from situations like that is an electric bike from our mm. friends over at RPM Bike Shop. They are located in Carrollton, Ohio. They offer you electric bikes. And I'll tell you what, if you're going up a really steep hill, you don't have to be embarrassed that your scrawny little legs can't get you up that hill. You can mm-hmm. call Carrollton, uh, you can call RPM Bike Shops located in Carrollton at 330. In Carrollton, 330-808-7792, and they will hook you up with one of their great electric bikes. Uh, You just tell them Convincing Idiots sent you, and they'll be like, who the hell is that? But, and then you explain, you might have to go into some detail of who we are and maybe mention Brian. And then they'll be like, yeah, yeah, Convincing Idiots, awesome, great, yeah, love them. So be sure to check out uh, RPM Bike Shops. You can either call them at 330-808-7792, as I have mentioned, or you can visit their Facebook page today for your very own electric bike. Save yourself some embarrassment. Get an electric mm-hmm. bike. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen, we are now at the stage of I'm going to ask you your most cringeworthy, embarrassing story. Um, mm-hmm. Before I do, Brian, um, are we good on time or... Uh, we're good. Use a break. Uh, if you need a break, we can take a little break. I'd like to pee. Yeah, yeah let's take a little break. Let's do that. Yeah. Then we'll come back. But when when we come back, um, a you don't you 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 don't want to uh, skip through Brian's uh, dulcet tones, but also we are going to give our most embarrassing stories, um, mm-hmm. our most cringeworthy stories. I know mine is not easy to tell. Um. It doesn't, yeah. So, even telling it gives me the 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 feeling and cringe, douche chills down the back of my spine that it did back then. So, but you don't have to be that back. embarrassed about not wearing an undershirt under that flannel. It's it's okay. I mean, it's I, it's not really acceptable, only, but it's okay. Motherfucker, I am not only not embarrassed. I'm doing another button just for you. No. Boom, <laughs> boom. Come I back. can't wait to hear what actually gives Come you back. chills after that. I don't even know. <laughs> I want to hear that shit. <laughs> Come back and find out. 
All right, we'll be right back with embarrassing. Actually, these guys have an embarrassing situation that's going to happen when they go to the John in a minute, but that's for Always. another time. Ooh, that's for the time. Ding! Dad Thanks. got us on that one. <laughs> All right, test, 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 <clears throat> test, test. You are wrong. I am wrong. You are wrong because you were an idiot. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have convinced you successfully that you are wrong. Unfortunately, uh, you don't have to convince me. But you didn't at first, and now he does. Now he's convinced. So <laughs> I'm now convinced right. I'm an idiot. Perfect. Let's right. see what it sounds like. That's the intro, like. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I like it. <laughs> Four, three. Welcome back to Convincing Idiots. You know, we're talking about embarrassing stories, embarrassing moments in life. Um, you know, one could be maybe we started this podcast. I don't know. I don't know if it's our most embarrassing. Not sure. It's maybe you there. think it is out there. I don't know. Depends but on which it's, episode. It's that's that's true. true. But it is probably not. The most Go back and listen to the ones where we did the whole uh, superhero fighting. Those aren't that bad. Those aren't that bad. <laughs> yeah, that was a great Hello. segue into our new uh, music genre battle bracket that we've done. That's, so that's that's good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So now we're going to get into uh, Barry Manilow versus Plastic Man. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. No, but uh, some of our, so Dean, you brought up the idea of talking about some of our most embarrassing stories. I'm here. And, and, Trust yeah, me. Hold your on. Your video froze for a second. Yeah. yeah. Well, it just kicked me out all together. Mm -hmm. His phone decided that he was the most embarrassing thing that it had ever done. That's so right. It's like, no, nah, not doing it. <laughs> Trying to get back in here. Go, go ahead, guys. It could, Continue. It could be that photo. I'm not sure. Right. Mm. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. At least he has an undershirt on in that one, so that's good. <laughs> I like that. Here there he is. Look at this. All right. <laughs> there you go. All about it. There that's right. Go. I'm back. All right, so Dean, this is your idea. So why don't we <clears throat> do you want to start with your story or do you want to go last? We'll leave it up to you. So this was your good um, idea. It, honestly, I, I just it, it, I want to say that Dean's, I don't know if it's going to be good or not. I have no idea mm -hmm. if I even know this story or not, but he teased it so hard that mm -hmm. it feels like me on prom night that I just, I don't want to follow it. So okay. I think I should go first go because mine is My not necessarily <clears throat> embarrassing. Well, it's go awkward. Okay. Yeah. Mine, mine is not, I don't, I, I struggled. To, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure I'm probably got in the, in the, deep dark depths of my brain i've got something so embarrassing maybe that's mm -hmm. happened to me that i've blacked it out but mine is not necessarily embarrassing more so is it awkward as it is awkward now, you, now you're back um all right how, how ironic you're telling a story about something embarrassing and you <laughs> oh man well this takes the cake <laughs> that's it i mean you're on the biggest yeah. stage in the world. Yeah. You're on convincing idiots. Mm -hmm. This is what you global, global goddamn podcast, podcast that you worked podcast. your whole life to get to this moment, and your fucking mic comes unplugged. Um, we mm -hmm. cannot listen. We cannot overtake David Hasselhoff in Germany <laughs> with you fucking the up. The Podlander okay. is right. watching, and this God, means, come on. Come um, on. so right, if ahead. you're if you're in the north. Well, I wouldn't say Northeast Ohio area. If you're in the Barberton area, we used to have a uh, bar called the Firehouse. Um, they used to have cheap. It was, you know, I don't want to say it was a dive bar. Maybe I don't know. It depends on your standards, I guess. It was, um, you know, there was cheap beers, cheap food, burgers, wings, stuff like that. So, at the time of this story, I was still in high school. Um, we used to go there, me and my friends, we used to go there for wing nights, which I think back at that day was like 25 cent wings or some shit. The bathrooms right. at the firehouse, uh, were not up to probably the, the best of standards, right? One men's room, correct? one women's room, right? Uh, when I walked into the men's room, I had to go to the bathroom. 
Uh, I had some particularly hot wings that day, so I had to uh, I had to do it too, right? So I in, I had to do bar. it too at the bar, right? In the moment, I was probably okay. if I ordered eight wings, I was probably six in. I mean, we're we're talking like mid meal, and shit hits. Wow, they hit hits. hard. Yeah, quick. They, and also okay. at the time, I'm younger. I'm like, let's go with the you know. I was in that phase where I'm like, let's eat the hottest shit. And like, sure, you know. Also, like yep. I mentioned, <laughs> might be considered a dive bar. I don't know what kind of sauce. I don't know what kind of quality of wings. I'm not saying any one thing or the other. Sure. There's just a lot of variables here. So I go to the restroom, uh, probably three quarters of the way through the meal. I notice that there's not really a lock on the door per se. Uh, there, there maybe used to be one of the slide locks, but it's not there anymore. So it's just a swing open door. Well, when you open the door, there is simply, uh, uh, right next, if you're standing in the doorway immediately to the left against the wall that you would be approaching is the sink straight back is a toilet. And on the wall to your right is a urinal. Okay. Simple bathroom, one person, right? One person occupancy. Uh, I can't, I don't really have the time to worry about the fact that there's not a proper lock on the door. It's happening. So I need to shit. Time is of the right. essence. So all I do is I'm like, whatever. I'm just, it's, it's time to go. There's not a lot of people in there. The chances of somebody else walking in are not impossible, but you know, on the slimmer side, whatever. It doesn't matter. Got to go. So I sit down. Uh, it's, it's go time. <laughs> I'm in the process of doing my thing. Um, I don't know how many minutes in, but uh, a gentleman knocks on the door. And as I'm saying that I'm in here, he enters and opens the door. And I say, sorry, <laughs> one in here. I knew this was a possibility. Not that embarrassing. Not a big deal. He goes, mm -hmm. oh, okay, no worries. Continues to walk in. The door shuts behind him. I am now, I While am now, you're... okay, so if I can explain to you again the bathroom. When you walk into the door, there is a urinal, or I'm sorry, a stall, a toilet, against the wall. And to the right, there is a urinal. So I am now mm. sitting, taking a dump, and this gentleman... <laughs> He's in the stall no, with you? he's at the urinal. Oh, but this the is urinal. a small restroom. His ass is directly sure. in my face, and he's pissing. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm going to estimate. And, I mean, if I wanted to reach out with my arm <laughs> and pull the backside right. of his pants down, which I thought about doing, uh, I could have. Uh, right? He's right. I mean, I actually could probably go half arm's length and touch him. He's. It's a small bathroom. He's right there. Mm-hmm. That is was as awkward as I could possibly feel. Like I couldn't wrap my mind around entering a bathroom and having to pee and seeing someone shitting and going, well, there's still a place to pee. So I'm going to take advantage right. of that. That was super awkward. Even more <laughs> awkward was the gentleman that, uh, that entered after that, that opened the door <laughs> and I can, he stood there for so long. I can only imagine he was thinking about pissing in the sink because there was nowhere for him to go. He stood there in the doorway and <laughs> just kind of evaluated the situation for a minute. Are you sitting down? Have you pinched <laughs> it off yet? I Yeah. So essentially, <laughs> I was equal. I mean, at this stage of my life, I was probably 19, 20 years old. I was incredibly, I wouldn't say embarrassed. It was, it was embarrassing. But, but it was awkward, a bit. but I also at the same time couldn't wait to go back to the table and tell my friend and my girlfriend that like what had just happened because I was like, you'll right. never fucking believe right. what happened. So <clears throat> that is, I don't know if it qualifies as the ultimate, it wasn't like that douche chill embarrassing well, thing, if you but were it was awkward I mean, as shit. Like I just, I feel like I was second handedly embarrassed more so for the guy that entered afterwards and still chose to pee. Like. I feel well, like that's, that's something. That's the I thing about the embarrassment people is, is that guy probably didn't give well, a shit. He didn't think anything. I feel like in my it. brain, if I were mm. drunk enough to like walk into a bathroom and someone was doing that, and then I already like, you know, took the bait and was like, "Well, there's a urinal," and not thinking, You're just going, and then I'm there, and then my thoughts catch up to me, and I'm like, "What am I doing right now?" Like I'm embarrassed. Then I would be embarrassed. Oh, I'm if I'm that drunk, I'm at least gonna try to pull out a fucking fart. Oh, he could have ripped one and right in my, my fucking face. mouth. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd have done that. So, What's the guy taking a shit going to do? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Sit there and take <laughs> it. What are you? You could be peeing in there for all I know. You'd be sitting and peeing. That's right. 
You sit down with you, P. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get that. That that's uh yeah, that's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah, definitely. All right, Brian. What do you got? All right, so I work for a large company. So convincing idiot so think. Yep. Uh we're familiar. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> right. That's right. Almost as large as the company I work for, for real. Sure. I won't say the name. So close. Yep. But it's a, it's a global-wide organization, a uh, multi-billion dollar company uh, in annual revenue. Um, we uh, have a, a, a headquarters in, uh, well, now it's in Hudson, but we were in, we were in North Canton at the time. So does it, this, this, is, did, does this uh, company rhyme with Tryon Incorporated? No, it does not. No? Okay. Yeah. No, I, 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 we're not really friends, so we don't know if like he's super rich. We we have no clue. Right. So sure, that's right. I so it this is pre pandemic, so we're still in the office, and we had a town hall. Okay, so everybody in the corporate office does it rhyme with bangbus.com? No, <laughs> Even it does switching not. letters didn't work on that one. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> So the town hall was held in the <laughs> place where the Canton minor league basketball team plays. So it's like it's a that was a basketball arena. They set up a stage, and then we had a new C, you know, president of the company at the time, newer guy of the company. So we, we just knew who he was. He was coming into the town. I think it was his first time in town visiting the corporate office. Okay, so they had a town hall. So we had people on the floor and people in these in the in the stands. It was several thousand people at the time were working in the corporate office. It's different now, but it, it's that's what it was at the time. And then they had a section where they can ask. They wanted to take employee questions, right? And prior to the town hall, I had a a person from the marketing team come up to me, who knew me from their office, and said, "You know, hey Brian, you know, just we want to make sure there's no dead air when the president and the executive sure. are taking questions, right?" So they were just kind of picking people throughout the company that, hey, if there's dead air, will you get up and ask a question? Just in to front keep of thousands going. of people. Sure. Okay. Okay. Right. So I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. And she says, well, you can come up with your own question, or we'll, we can give you a question. I said, give me, give, just give me a question. That's fine. So I took the question and I read it. I'm like, okay, just I printed it. I was smart enough to at least write it down and have it. Sure. Okay. And I'm like, all I have to do, if there's dead air, read the question, let them answer it, and get out of there, right? So I'm sitting there, and I'm wearing this bright blue shirt that day, like a dress shirt with a tie, okay? First of all, and I'm sitting there like, eh, it's fine. I probably won't even have to do this anyway. I'm just trying to be nice. This lady was nice in the marketing. I knew her from, you know, again, around the office and stuff. And next thing I know, nobody... At least in my mind, I'm like, there's nobody getting up to the mic here, right? To ask, so it's go question. time, Brian. Tom, so, right? So now I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to let her down. I promised I would if it was a, a, a delay, right. you know, a lull rather. So I said, you know, I have a question. I get up there and I'm now I'm waiting my turn. Somebody else is asking, and I'm standing there, and now I'm starting to get nervous because it's like I'm standing there in the aisle way, and there's a fucking spotlight on this microphone. And it's the president of the company up on stage, right? Asking these, you know, answering these questions. I'm thinking again. Answer the question, get out of there. You'll answer the question, ask the question, rather, let them answer, get out of there. So I, I read the question. Barely, I just like it was something about. I don't even really know what it, it was. Something around change management question. It was like, how can we more effectively manage? change management or how can we do this better or something along that line sure right read the question well first of all i get up there I actually a I prelude to that I, I forgot about that i get up there and he looks at me he goes oh look at this guy with the bright blue shirt this is the brightest so he calls shirt, you out shirt. look at this oh, yeah. bitch up this here on the stage it's <laughs> the brightest you know it's the brightest shirt i've seen of the day something like that ha ha you know and i'm like i, I don't mind that and next thing i know everybody's now now they're looking at you. Mm-hmm. Who who's at the guy at the microphone? I'm like, okay. Right. Now I'm like, Ugh. you know, you know. Again, there's several thousand people. Everybody yeah. simultaneously goes, so, look at the bright blue shirt guy. 
That's what yeah. I felt like. Sure. The big fat so, pony. <laughs> <laughs> so I so I asked I asked a question. What about the change management? Whatever. And I stop. And he looks at me and he goes, Hmm. What would you do? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> fucking curve, Fuck. goddamn ball. And, I, and, and I'm just every like, hair on the back of your neck just fucking stands up. Oh my god, it's just I it was god. Just like, that's awful. I was like, what in the fuck did he just say? That's where you take the mic I, hard to the face and go, "Fuck bitches, get money," and mic drop and leave. <laughs> <laughs> so that felt like an eternity. So the first th- the first thought that popped in my mind was, I, well, first of all, I had no answer at all, zero. Right. Right. Zero answer. No thought into how I might even answer this question. You don't even, at this point, you probably don't even honestly realize what you're asking. No. No. It's a a written question. It was given to you. It's not even your authentic question. That's right. Right. That's right. Zero response. You could have easily been, he he could have been easily asking you, what are your thoughts on thermodynamics? Sure. Exactly. Right. So, the first thing I thought about was like, well, if I can answer that quickly, I might be on the stage with you guys. Oh, yeah, that's thought, good. That, that, that's quick. That's quick. And then I thought not, but then I thought mm, scratch that because it's a fucking president don't of the get goddamn fired, company. Probably. I don't know if it's. I don't know if this guy thinks that would be funny. Oh, if he's or got an funny. ego, yeah. I have no idea. So I'm like, hmm. Well, let me think about that just for a second here. That I haven't really thought about answering it or something stupid like that. And he goes, well, let me help you. Blah 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 blah, and now I'm stand, and I have to stand there, right, with a spot. Now he owned you, and he's helping you. (laughs) Oh my god! There's a reason you're a peon. Yeah, that was pretty embarrassing. So I I I had to slink off that microphone and sit down. And of course, in my department, the rest of the day was like, "Hey, great answer, ha ha!" (laughs) And then I had to just and you're the boss, dipshit, huh? (laughs) Right. I had to turn around and just make fun of myself at that point. Just sure. like, hey, you know what? You know. So I, I joked around. He fast forward. He was visiting the office recently in Hudson. I told a colleague, I should wear that motherfucking blue shirt, <laughs> right? And to see and to see if he recognizes me. I would almost did guarantee you, you he doesn't say not. you know, No, I didn't. I did not. That was a random. No, that was a random right. statement that right. day nope. that that guy was like blue, blue shirt, blue like shirt guy. Yep. Yeah, blip on right. the radar. That was it. Hey, you're that guy with the blue yeah. shirt that had a shit yeah. answer. I know and you. No, no answer. Zero right. answer. No I remember answer. you. Hey, zero answer. Look at this guy, everybody. What a yeah. bitch. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I had, a, I had a colleague then. At, 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 it was a new guy at the next town hall the next year. Okay. Same scenario. And he says, I'm going to ask this question. I said, don't ask the motherfucking question. That you cannot right. answer. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. And he got up on this. He got up there, asked the question. He did it. Sure enough. Ah, uh, sure enough. The guy said, "Well, what ooh. would you do?" Something like that. And he had a mother. He, and my buddy had a, he had an answer. And I was just and like, so this boss. company has a history <laughs> yeah, he, he, of their almost, higher ups teabagging yeah. their underlings. It's a it's a known fact. Well, well what it's it like is, they don't have an answer. They don't. But, have right. An so they're anyway. buying exactly. time. He, yeah. Right. He, he, that's him. Fucking playing it. Yeah, uh, sure. They're stalling so yeah. they could think of an answer to put it back on the on way the to be a. F- he could have pretty- told you. Yeah. He could have said, "Okay, good question. Spin for us, and let's all watch you dance for right. a moment." Uh, sure. While he Absolutely. thinks about uh, what to say, that'd yeah. have been a relief. Yeah, right. <laughs> you put your hands in your head and just spin and this. spin and spin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so that was less that was embarrassing. Pretty that was pretty yeah, embarrassing. absolutely. Yeah, so Dean, what do you got? <clears throat> okay. It's going to be a sex story. I know it is. It's Dean. All right. He's had so, sex three times in his life, and they've all been embarrassing, I, I, so I know <laughs> it's going to be one of them. Carter one. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I have proof of one. <laughs> Physical proof. I got one fuck trophy. <laughs> I got a fuck trophy out there. Maybe two. So, all right, so... I don't even know. I've, I've been I've been debating how far to to, to preface this. Um, all right, and I'll do it real quick. Um, I was working at a drive-through in my. You know, 20s. wish we had more time. Nick, I, I wish we had more time. Sorry. 
<laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good fishing, idiots. Go ahead. Real quick, uh, I I was in my twenties and I worked at drive through. Um, I wasn't paying attention one day that you know I other people were getting cars. There's an inside, and I'm I'm sitting there reading a the paper. And girl walks up and says, "Um, can I get a, a, a lottery ticket?" And I go to reach behind me. I said, "Which one?" I'm not even looking. And she goes, oh, "Which one?" I I pulled it, reach over, hand it to her, and I said. Honestly, it was a joke because I didn't even see her. I reached over and said, if it's a winner, you're paying for dinner when, when I take you out. And I pulled it down to see her reaction, and she was, like, just mortified. Just staring. Sure. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, that joke didn't land. All right, so but what the fuck do I care? You know, she walks out, don't see her again. A day later, uh, she drives through the drive through and she pulls up and says, hey, were you serious? I said, well, no, not about you paying, but, but she goes, no, are you taking me out? I said, yeah, yeah, you want. So we exchanged numbers, and so that that's how this and, uh, this young lady and, and I met and, and going out on a couple days. Oh, this is Megan's embarrassing we were... story. This is how she met. Oh, <laughs> no, no, okay. no, 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 no. That's another story altogether, which we will not tell. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> we've gone out on one date that it was, it was okay. It was a we went to dinner or whatever. And then the second date. All right. So we are going to, uh, my buddy Mark and his, uh, girlfriend live in this apartment and they've invited, uh, me and this young lady and, uh, my buddy, Tim and Robin. And there was a couple other people. We were going to have a game night, right? Small apartment. Uh, we get up there, everybody goes in and, we're in there, and, and I, okay, I got to pee. All right, we've been drinking beer, so I got to pee. I go into the restroom, and it's a, once again, small apartment. You have a living room, and off this, just past the living room, you have the door to the bedroom, and you have to go through their bedroom to get to the bathroom. At the, when I'm saying small, it's not a separate situation. You have to go through their bedroom into the bathroom. So I'm in the bathroom, and I'm peeing. You know, my shoulders hurt because it's so big and I'm holding. Um, so I'm peeing and we've all been there where you're pissing and all of a sudden it hits. Shit's coming. Shit's coming fast. So I have to throw my pants down and spin around and unleash hell into this toilet. <laughs> and it won't stop coming. I don't know where it came from. I didn't feel like I had to shit earlier. Uh, none of this, it, it, literally, it was within seconds. All of this is coming out. When you were in the, the Dumb and Dumber scene where his feet are yeah. in the air and he's shaking. It was a lot like that. And it's just unleashing hell. And, and once I'm done, like like Jeff Daniels, I'm like, oh, oh my God. But holy fuck, this stinks. It's a small apartment. So I'm, and, and they didn't, they, and I'm thinking, light a match. Fuck. They don't allow smoking in their, uh, in their apartment. So I'm like, fuck, what do I do? So I, I, and you know, wipe and I flush and, and it, I'm sweating. I'm just pouring sweat of just nervousness. And I'm like, fuck, what do I do across? You know, if I open up the, the bathroom door is the bedroom and across the bed is a, 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 a sliding glass door to a little balcony. I'm like, fuck, okay. So, Because I'm taking a long time. This took a long time. I'm like, fuck, if I, if I can get across there without people hearing me, I can get out onto the balcony, smoke a cigarette, come out and go, yeah, sorry, guys, I wanted to smoke, so I snuck out of the balcony. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm going to do it. So I ninja roll across the bed, because if I walk across, they're going to be able to see me past the doorway so i ninja roll across the bed go outside smoke a cigarette and like fuck i think i did it I, nobody heard me i got out there again i don't know how except long except for you've been gone was... for three and a half games of yahtzee right I, I i i couldn't exactly judge the time but i think i did it i think i got through and and where i could fool people so i get back <clears throat> 
And I come out, I've wiped the sweat off, and, you know, I, I look presentable, and I come back into the living room, and and I'm like, oh, sorry, guys, I just smoked a cigarette. And everybody looked at me just fine, except my buddy Tim looks up and goes, you can't fool us. We smelt that shit fucking minutes ago. <laughs> Called you right out. Called me out in front <laughs> of her. <laughs> and th- 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 there's nowhere to go. There's no. nothing to say. You're stuck. And this and this girl, mind you, was um I'm here. She's here. Like sh- it shouldn't have been a thing. She shouldn't have said yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she realized it in that moment. Um Yep. <laughs> I mean, she probably already knew on some level, but like at this point, she's like conf- confirmation. Some level, the fucking yeah, surface yeah. level, she knew. Now that brings me into an interesting question. Uh, yeah. If 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 the roles were reversed, let's say the let's say the girl's still out of your league, right? And that thing happens. Does that drive you okay. away? No, not me. No, but I mean, okay. Let's say the roles were let's let's say it was uh, even even plain, where you felt you were, you know, you guys were on each other's levels. Or we whatever. lost video. Back. Would that would okay. that change anything? Would you look at her differently because she shits like a person? And sometimes no stuff. No, goes... but I mean, I guess the smell was so yes. bad that it was talked about while sure. I was in there. Yeah. And he called me out. Everybody was all fine and keen to leave it go and not say anything. But but this asshole calls me <laughs> that out. That is a bit of a dick move. <laughs> like, I mean. Oh, a huge move. And he was yeah. proud of it. If I called him up now, he'd still yeah. be proud of it. But there's certain <laughs> friends that I can think of that I'm like in a similar situation. There's some I would protect and some I'd go full bore like, yeah, you're fucked. Like the right. second and he went full the bore. second I catch and he you was, out of line. He's like, one of my best right. friends. Yeah. It depends on um, your friendship. <laughs> it just it, it not even doesn't right. even mean closeness wise. It's just you have those friends that right. you go. I'm going to protect these ones and these ones. Fuck them forever because that's our friendship. Well, this is the same guy that we were outside at a um, at a party in a front yard, and I'm talking to this girl, and all of a sudden somebody punched me. So in that the one jaw. I heard, yeah. <laughs> and and I turn around I'm like, and I'm ready to fight. I turn around and he's yeah. laughing. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So like half, I wait for like an hour later, talking to the girl. I'm like, hold on. I run up and just fucking drill him. I'm like, eh, he just laughs and we just laugh and yeah, that so kind of friendship. It, I you know, feel just, like just that fucking. story. Like if I'm the girl, right? If I'm the girl that's out of your league that picks up a date, yeah. And I walk into scenario yeah. A, which is you shitting and discreetly and being called out for it, and s- situation B, where you're fighting on it breaks out into a fight in the front lawn. I'm different girl. Okay, different I know, girl. but I'm saying if I'm in both scenarios, scenario A is right. certainly more embarrassing for you, but scenario B is the one I'm walking away from. <laughs> it's the girl. Right. Well, the, the, <laughs> these guys I, are punching If each I other remember correctly, the, 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 no the girl and I, I, I drove her home or whatever, um, and and we we went out on another date after that. Okay. And we wow. we had we had not done anything, consummated anything. You know, the like the third date, the 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 last date. Um uh for whatever reason she drove that night. Okay. Or I drove her back to the, my house or she parked it. I can't remember this scenario. Anyways, we pulled up and I thought to myself, invite her in. Three dates. Why not? Right. And I thought it was gonna be a gentleman. Mm-hmm. And 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 give her you know whatever space time and then the shit struck and again. No, she. I guess she went home and her ex boyfriend called her and she got back together with him uh, that night. If I would have invited her in, she wouldn't have answered the phone. Man. But mm-hmm. fate. Yeah, things fate. work out for a reason. There mm-hmm. you go. Yep. Life harmonizes. Now Megan gets to smell well, your shit. Fast. She's so lucky. <laughs> that's right there you go. that's there right you go. yep i bet she's just grinning at her at this point oh sure yep 
Well, that was it, boys. So right. That's that was my embarrassing that's a good one. story. That's a, that's a very good very one. Good. Absolutely. Other ones can't probably by law can't be told on air. Sure. <laughs> so that actually makes you sound like potentially a sexual predator, or like there's, there's <laughs> no, a, no, no, no. There's a lot of avenues. No, it is maybe you just yeah say they're too dis, too uh, too e- explicit to tell on air. That's that, exactly right. what I was talking about. Yeah, the, the, I just yeah, want to they're... clarify that so no one embarrassing that sex stories you're going to go to jail. You, if you guys don't want to hear. <laughs> no, 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 not jail. No, 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 no. I can't tell. I can't very well sit here and tell a global podcast. No. You know that women were so afraid that my penis was yeah. so big. I can't tell those stories. Except so I won't. in Deutschland, there's a lot of video. There's a lot well, of things that know. go on over there that's fine. Well, we should we should do a world tour, Absolutely. and that should be our first stop. Brian, yeah. cut us loose before we fucking lose all of our point five listeners. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's do that. Yeah, other people grinning. We mentioned grinning ear to ear. Other mm-hmm. people grinning ear to ear are those who are hearing. It's time to <laughs> wrap up this. Episode. Thanks, mom and dad, for listening. I'm sorry you had to listen. No, that's this right. Long. Especially Nick's mom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, so Nick, <laughs> could you remind the folks where we can be found? I will. Please. We can be. F- and given the story that I was uh, that I just told, maybe you should do it as is if you're taking a shit. Okay. A real hard one. Real okay. difficult. Well, I feel some. It's funny you should say that because I'm feeling some stuff, kind of mm-hmm. building, and it's all right. So, whew, this is the most. <laughs> Embarrassing outro I've ever done. Uh, <laughs> if I shit myself actually pulling this off, I'm going to be really Excuse upset. Excuse me, just if you. you don't mind it. And also a little bit of myself. <laughs> uh, we could be... F- okay, I'm going to speed this up because I don't have a lot of time, but... Uh, if we... If somebody I, pissing next to you. <laughs> I'm going to... You could be found... We could be found uh, all our social media accounts on... Uh, if you go to Google and you search... Convincing idiots. Uh, convincing idiots. <laughs> Link tree, you're gonna find the links to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram <laughs> and uh, other places. Uh, email, uh, I don't know. Show that to uh, boss. <laughs> uh, okay, I think it's subsided. Um, you can we could also go to our website, which is no, it's back. It's back. Convincing idiots. <laughs> dot WordPress. Uh, God. Uh, you can find. All of the links there, as well as where to listen to the podcast. <sighs> Subscribe and uh, like and rate and review, please. We please, God, please. We appreciate it. And um, <laughs> so for this episode of Convincing Idiots, <sighs> for this episode of Convincing Idiots, I. I'm your millennial and I have hot snakes. I mean, I'm Nick Schaefer and Nick, and this is. Go. No, I can't. Valid. I don't know how well that's going to go. Everything we and there to goes our three subscribers. <laughs> we actually, not only did we drop the three we gained, we actually lost seven additional subscribers. Your I, I watched it the other day and I fucking unsubscribed. <laughs>